Hi, BookTube. It's Peg. I'm back at the History Shelf. Um, had a couple of interesting takes. I had a, uh, a blooper reel I may or may not upload with Boomer, and then I had a moment of severe indecision on whether to continue the video or not, and I decided on the latter of not continuing. Um, but anyway, <laughs> I have the house to myself, but the dogs are, sometimes they just don't, uh, you know, want to cooperate when I want to make a video with you guys. Um, they kind of, they were there for, for the last one, and then Boomer just, he needed to be fed, and so, uh, so I kind of rushed it towards the end, but eh, it was a long video on theology. You're probably like, yeah, pull the plug already. But anyway, I had a few new books I wanted to show you guys and just chat with you, um, see where my thoughts lead me. Um, first that came in, the, well, let me just start by saying, I'm going to start with something that's not a book, but, um, and this is not an ad or anything like that, but it's something within it led me to the book that I got. So anyway, I don't know if you guys have heard of or have ever listened to or downloaded or bought from the great courses they used to be the uh, the teaching company I have bought a lot of their stuff over the many years I'd say 10 years started off when it when it was uh, mostly just um, CDs then they moved into obviously and then the technology caught up and they had them with the DVDs and then they had um, they had DVDs and then they started doing streaming uh, audio and then streaming video and now they're on audible so if you have an audible account um, they just got these wonderful courses uh, and you can just teach yourself just about anything um, I've got a ton of them upstairs I should probably just take a quick video tour of um, all the different courses I have I've, they're a mixture mostly CD uh, but then I started branching out into DVD some of the courses on history you know you want to see like some archaeology stuff some video some pictures maps of battles things like that um but i just love these courses and that uh, you know driving to work i got about a 30 minute commute and um you pop one of these cds in and it really just passes the time and it makes me just that's probably why my library is so huge over these years is i've just would lis listen to these lectures and be like oh i want to know more about that person or about this event or that battle and then i go and get a book so having said all that I am loving this course by uh, J. Rufus Fears. He's, he unfortunately passed away very recently, as, let's say in the last few years, but wow. I think he's one of their most highly rated um, uh, narrators or, or, I'm sorry, like professors, lecturers. Um, he has some on video. Um, this one's called The Wisdom of History. It's a three-part course, and each CD uh, has... Uh, uh, each each this box has six CDs with 12 lectures on each one and uh, oh it's just great it starts off with like why we study history and then he goes into World War one and the lessons of history um, then he goes into the birth of civilization ancient Israel Greece the Athenian democracy all the way through Alexander the Great I'm actually on um, this is part one I'm on part three of which is in my car right now and he recently just was covering like the Russian Empire in six six uh, six tracks, and then the second one was on the Chinese Empire, which uh, is fascinating. And I've always wanted to to broaden my knowledge of uh, Chinese history. I've so I purchased a lot of different books on them, and I just need to st start structuring and project out the different time frames and countries that I want to uh, study. I think I really need to have a more um, linear approach to some of the things that I want to read or learn about so but the Chinese Empire and Chinese history is one of those that I really want to study so anyway he was talking about how oh just how China evolved and um, and how uh, the Mongols really shaped both Russia and China in their history and um, and then how also Mao Zedong um, impacted that country in a way that you know, uh, like he was saying, he, he has a saying that, you know, um, people often make the mistake in history thinking that freedom is a universal value. And he says that is incorrect. It is not a universal value. Um, 
so being in the West or being in America, we figure, oh, we should just, you know, uh, export out this, this value because it's universal. Everyone wants to be free. Of course, you can get into different definitions about what freedom means to different people, but uh, just, you know, using the standard definition of freedom of speech, freedom of, you know, person, your body, your property rights, these kind of things, um, voting rights, all these things are not universally agreed upon. And you have to take each country and each culture and really understand and study their history to see what their values are, you know, and some cultures value, um, like with Russia, they, their history, they like a strong man. And, um, and that has to do with how they were fighting for survival, um, from East and West, from the Mongols, from the Chinese, from, uh, yeah, then the Vikings coming down on the, on the West side. I mean, so basically I'm just kind of rambling here, but I'm just trying to say that, um, there's always a, a you know, mitigating factors for why cultures and countries go the way they do. Um, so the study of history is so important and this is just such an enlightening course, the wisdom of history. And he is a magnificent storyteller. He really gets into it. And, uh, but in a very, you know, non-dramatic way, but he, uh, he tells, a, he tells a great, great story and you can tell he loves history. So anyway, he was talking about China and how when George Marshall, um, went over there, uh, after World War II to see about, you know, saving China, um, uh, because at this time you had, uh, Chiang Kai-shek, um, and the nationalists fighting against, uh, Mao Zedong and, uh, the communists for basically the future of this, of this country. And, uh, he came back from what, where he had, uh, you know, the people he had met with and talked with and seen what was going on and just the sheer, um, the sheer uh, following, the size of the following of Mao Zedong. And it just boggles the mind. You know, I just don't even understand why people buy into it. Um, but anyway, he came back and they said, well, you know, what's going on? And he's like, China is lost. It's lost. You know, communists are going to win it. Um, of course, it could be said that, you know, well, we maybe probably should have uh, backed Chiang Kai, Kai-shek a bit more than we did. But that, that gets into another a very involved argument. But anyway, when he said that about George Marshall going over to China, I was like, there's that book I wanted to get because <laughs> I wanted to read exactly about that event. And I was like, uh, I need to get it. And the price had dropped on Amazon. So I was like, I'm pulling the trigger today. So I got the China mission by Daniel Kurtz Phelan or Felon, Phelan. Let's say Phelan, not Felon. <laughs> um, so George Marshall's unfinished war, 1945 to 1947. Of course, a lot of people blamed Marshall and say Marshall lost China. But I, I, I think that's too simplistic. You can't, you can't blame it on one person. But well, then you got uh, this Chiang Kai-shek right here. Um, yeah, so this is going to be a fascinating read. But again, it goes to show how my library can be... You know, my books come from everywhere. They're triggered by certain things. Listening to a course on this, and I'm like, yes, I want to get this book on the, the China. You know, just how we lost China. Or how we lost China, as if we could lose another country. Um, you know, they're, they made their own decisions, you know, but, um, and George Marshall intrigues me anyway. Um, having read that massive biography on Eisenhower, I learned a lot about George Marshall. Um, uh, just as a, a side note, or yeah, he was a major character, obviously in Eisenhower's life. So, uh, and that book I showed was Eisenhower in War and Peace by, um, Gene Edward Smith. So I do recommend that one. Um, plus I bought the recent massive biography on George Marshall. And I believe it's, it's over here, probably next to my massive biography on Douglas MacArthur. I'm intrigued by all these, uh, these, 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 you know, four-star general guys from World War II. They're just really intriguing to me. Um, so having th that bio on George Marshall, um, and I also, I haven't gotten the Marshall plan, which is that recent book. I don't know who the author is off the tip of my tongue, but, um, that also would be a really good read to pair up with, um, 
the China mission. So, so a new book there. Sorry, it took me 10 minutes to, to say all that, but you know, I'm rambling about history and talking and, and uh, again, the great courses, if you're wanting, if you're on the go and you really can't spend a lot of time reading a very, you know, thick book, which I'd love to do, but it takes time, you know, but if you're at the gym and you want to put some earbuds in, I love it. And there's so many different topics you can choose that their history selection is amazing. And they're all, things are always on sale and Hey, it's black Friday. So, you know, knock yourself out. Okay. So, um, next book I picked up was a rec, not a recommendation, but I, I saw it on David Murphy's channel and I really enjoy a lot of the things that David Murphy reads. Uh, I think we, we share a lot in common. Um, some of our, our interests and we subscribe to some of the same magazines. So he sh he talked about this and I just love the title of this book. And I think I've seen this author, uh, in one of the journals that I subscribe to. So I picked up, thanks David. I picked up egalitarianism as a revolt against nature. That is a great title and other essays by Murray Rothbard. So just a selection of, uh, um, this is put out by the, uh, Von Mises, the Mises Institute. And, um, yeah, so I, I just am intrigued. Uh, he's kind of like a libertarian type of writer and, uh, a selection of different war peace in the state, justice and property rights, the anatomy of the state, left and right, the prospects for liberty. This is the kind of stuff I, I, I eat up and I'm pretty sure I've seen some of this stuff printed in the independent review, which is a Another journal I subscribe to. I, sh I shall, you know, I'll do a journal video just showing you some of the journals I subscribe to um, and read. The Independent Review is a journal of political economy. That is what they call it. But anyway, yeah, so I got this one. Kind of excited, kind of different. Love it. So, yeah, so I got the China Mission and this one. And then this one was on sale. I, su I am a subscribing member to the Library of America series. And, um, you know, recently Harold Bloom passed away, um, a wonderful writer and critic. And, um, this book was just completely on sale. I don't know why it was just like $13. Um, and I was like, well, I'm, I'm going to add it to my collection and it's put out by library America, library of America, but it doesn't look like all the other set standard books. Um, but it's called the American Canon literary genius from Emerson to Pinchon. Harold Bloom, Five Decades of Writing on American Literature. I still have the shrink wrap on it. I just got it in the mail. So um, this is going to be good. He writes on, uh, he writes on like uh, Emerson and Hawthorne, Poe, Thoreau, Dickinson, Robert Frost, Theodore Dreiser, Willa Cather. So just wonderful stuff. Catherine Ann Porter, um, Nathaniel West. Hemingway, we got Flannery O'Connor in here, Carson McCullers, Toni Morrison, Philip Roth, uh, Cormac, oh, Steve's favorite, Cormac McCarthy, <laughs> Ursi, Ursula Le Guin, a science fiction writer. Um, so yeah, just a ton more. Zora Neale um, Hurston. So this is this is going to be a great a great um, book to own and have and read and just get his you know. I'd like to read more, um, literary criticism. I, you know, Steve Donahue talks about it all the time and I've seen a lot of his, uh, collected essays that he likes to just browse in his library. And I'm like, that sounds nice. That sounds relaxing. Just you know, pick it up, read one essay on a writer or on a book and, uh, you know, learn something about, you know, how, how you critique a book. It's, it's helpful. It's helpful to me too. You know, I'm writing some book reviews and, but, um, yeah, I just, I think it's interesting and I love reading book reviews. I, and all the different journals I read, um, I used to subscribe to wall street journal. I just could not keep up with the newspaper every day. I just, you know, and I felt like I was wasting money, but I loved their book review section. So it sucks that I can't access the, uh, the online reviews. I get the alert saying it's out and then, you know, I get like the first paragraph and it's like subscribe to read the rest of it. And I'm like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe someday. Okay, guys. Well, I think that's something for right now. Um, oh, and I guess it's right here, so I'll show you. I, I'm a member of the American Historical Association, the A A the A H A, and uh, they put out um, 
a review every, uh, gosh, I don't know if it's quarterly or not, but this is my first one. It came in the mail the other day. I was high, I was eagerly anticipating it. This is the American Historical Review. Sorry for the glare. Um, it's, it's printed by Oxford University Press, but uh, this this thing is a book in itself, really. This is holy crap. Well, you know how the pages in a journal they're continuous. So I mean, it, it starts on page. 1,200 because they go from the time they started printing them, but it uh, looks like it's about well over 300 pages. So you have articles in here and you've got some, um, you know, uh, essays, but the majority of it are book reviews. Uh, and I just love it. I just love it because of course it gives me ideas of what else to read. I just love reading book reviews and it's a nice big kind of lays flat as you're reading it. So I dig it. Um, it gives you a nice, uh, you know, whoa, suggested reading from different publishers and, uh, yeah, I love it. So yeah, guys, I mean, I'm, this is the kind of stuff I get in the mail and it's, and it's just, you know, it's more than just books. So I, I get magazines and journals too. And these things I try to keep up on it's impossible to keep up on all of it, but I, I try diligently, try to pick out the things that most interest me. Um, anyway, guys, so uh, those are some new books. Those are some thoughts on history. Those are some thoughts on listening to great courses while you're commuting or working out. You know, how do you learn more about history? What's fun for you? How can you introduce more history or, you know, or nonfiction into your, into your life and uh, your reading and listening habits. But, um, yeah, I'm just enjoying it again. I just love reading. I love learning. And I just thought I'd share with you some of the ways that I, that I learn. And, um, yeah. Okay. Well, I've got a dog sitting on my foot. He's needy tonight. So I will end it here guys. Um, hope you're staying warm. I hope to make at least one more video this weekend. I know I was going to try to do a bookshelf tour. I have to finish the tree. I've got two book reviews to write. And uh, and I'm starting up another book. So, um, But I love it. I'll keep doing it. I'll make time somehow, some way. I'll get you some new content. So, Anyway, I want to say thank you guys to all you new subscribers. And please comment below. I love meeting you. And uh, thanks for sticking with me so long. You guys are troopers. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.